Hello, this is Joe Hildreth, and I am starting a series on uh, how to write extensions for Joomla 3.x. I say 3.x because uh, I think the current release is 3.5. I think the next major release is 3.6. Uh, I don't really quite understand the release schedule. But anyway, um, I am a, uh, uh, a hobbyist, and I would like to learn how to write extensions for Joomla. I have learned a little bit. Um, this series of videos will replace the current videos that are on uh, my website uh, covering um, the beginnings of Joomla 2.5. Uh, in order to um, develop for Joomla, we have to uh, have an environment that uh, will allow us to do that. And the very first thing that we uh, need um, uh, is a web server that uh, will run MySQL and PHP. Now, the system that I'm using here is Ubuntu 16.04. It's a long-term support. It's been out for a couple months now. Um, the only thing that I've done to this system is apply the updates and uh, change the background to a solid color and install just enough software so that I can record the desktop and um, assemble the videos. So the first thing that we're going to do here is uh, we're going to set up what's called a LAMP server. Uh, LAMP and it stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. In addition to installing LAMP, uh, we'll install PHP MyAdmin to uh, allow us uh, some access to the database without having to use the command line tools. So uh, let's get started. The uh, first thing we want to do is uh, open up a terminal and there's a couple ways to do that. If you're uh, uh, if you're comfortable with Unity, you can click on the search and type in term, and there's terminal, and it will start it up. And there we go. Uh, another way is uh, to use a keyboard shortcut. And my favorite one is Control, Alt, and T. So you see that brings up the terminal too. So I will frequently use that uh, just to save a little time. Okay, so uh, to install a uh, lamp can uh, be uh, easy. It can be hard, and it or it could be somewhere in between. It just really depends on what you want to make of it. Uh, I'm lazy, so I'm going to do it the easy way. And uh, so I'm going to use um, uh, 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 part of task select that you would normally use on uh, the server software to install. It just so happens that it works on the desktop too. So we're going to uh, sudo apt install lamp server and then we're going to put this little carrot on the end. This little carrot on the end, um, uh, like I said, is part of the task select uh, process that you would see on server, but this ensures that everything that we need to install to run um, uh, the Apache web server and MySQL and PHP and everything are all actually installed. So we're going to hit enter here. And of course you have to put in your sudo password. Okay and we'll let it go. So it will read a number of packages that it thinks that it needs to install. At this point uh, you want to hit yes and enter and then it will start downloading the packages from the archives. Okay, when the, uh, now that the software is downloaded and has started the install process, the very first thing it asks for is a MySQL uh, root user password. Now this password is very important, so uh, whatever password you select, uh, make sure that you remember it. If you have to write it down and hide it somewhere, remember where you hide it. Um, but we'll be using this password frequently, and it's important not to share this. One other thing I want to mention before we get started here is that uh, I'm going to be making some changes um, to the local LAMP setup here that um, are probably better to develop because you know, I'm on a machine here that uh, I can you know, have access to everything. But uh, th these are not best practices uh, in terms of setting up a web server for uh, that, you know, that's facing the outside world that you're going to be servicing a, a request to. So keep that in mind. So we're going to enter in... Um, uh, the root password. This can be anything that you want. Uh, like I said, just remember it's important to remember it. And it's going to ask you to repeat that password, enter the same password. And press enter and then it starts the install process. 
one of the things that changes changed in um, Ubuntu 14 to 16 is uh, the apt program. You can still use apt dash get, um, but apt uh, I notice uh, uh, has all the same functionality other than it looks like it puts a progress bar and I don't remember that being uh, available in the apt get version. Okay, when the uh, software is done being installed, uh, we'll be returned back to the prompt. So we can uh, test our install and make sure that it works. We can open up the browser and we can type in localhost and hit enter. Oops, I hope I've done that in the right spot, eh? And we should have a default um, Apache 2 web page. So, so far, so good. Let's. Um, move on. So the next thing that we want to install is a, an application called PHP My Admin. PHP My Admin allows you to um, create databases, uh, update and insert um, data, create tables, and basically anything that you could do in the uh, MySQL command line interface, uh, but it's it's web-based driven. Now PHP My Admin requires a couple of dependencies uh, and those dependencies are MB string and get text. The newer version of PHP MyAdmin uh, supports multi-byte uh, language strings. So you know those uh, those languages that uh, have a character set that are larger than the normal 8-bit character set, it could read those. So in order to install the um, required software, we're going to issue a sudo apt install. And the two pieces of required software or modules that we need for PHP are PHP dash MB string and PHP get text. Okay, it will ask you if you want to install it. We're going to say yes. And we'll go through the install process. And again, if this takes too long, I'll I'll edit this out. Okay, that was uh, pretty much painless. So now we can get on to installing PHP My Admin, and uh, we just issue a sudo apt install PHP My Admin. Now we could have done all three of these on one line; it would have been fine. But uh, I just wanted to emphasize that the previous two packages that we installed, MB String and Get Text. Uh, were a requirement of PHP admin, so that's the only reason why I've done those first. So I'm going to hit enter here, and it's going to say I need um, this amount of uh, software downloaded. Yes, I want to do that. Press enter, and we go through this again. And again, if this takes too long, I'll edit some of it out. Okay, when the install process starts, um, PHP my admin can automatically configure to run in a couple of different uh, web servers. So we're going to be using Apache 2, so uh, we're going to select that by pressing the space bar. We're going to tab and hit OK. And So after the uh, software installs, um, PHP MyAdmin needs to configure itself. And what it's asking here is that uh, that it can set up a database uh, to handle uh, the PHP MyAdmin info. Or if you're really good, you can set it up yourself. So we're going to uh, select yes on this here by uh, pressing enter since it's already highlighted. And then it wants a password that will be registered to use that database. This is a password that PHP My Admin will use to make modifications to the database. And you don't have to enter one here. If you don't enter one, it'll create a random one. You probably will never need to be in that database. But uh, what I'm going to do is set this password to the same as the root password that I set for my SQL that we've done on the LAMP install. So I'm going to enter that password. Tab and hit OK, and then it's going to ask for you know to confirm that password. So I'm going to enter it again. Hit Tab and hit OK.
So at this point it should be finishing up the install and as soon as it gives us our prompt back, which it's did, it should be done. So let's go test our work. Let's open our browser back up. We're going to go to localhost slash php my admin and hit enter and then there we have the login. So the login here of course is root because that's the only user that we uh, so far have for the database server and then the password is the password that we set up when we installed LAMP, the one I told you to remember, write down and don't lose. So we're going to enter that password and there we go. So if we've gotten this far we're, we're good to go and uh, we can continue on. So the next thing I'm going to do is here, I'm making a purposeful decision to set up Apache to use virtual hosts. By default, Apache uh, serves its pages in the ver www, I think HTML or public HTML folder. And um, it belongs to Apache. Um, and, you know, reading and writing files there as a normal user is, is kind of tough. Uh, because you know we we don't belong to that group and so to make life a little bit easier we're going to set up a virtual host now virtual host is a way for apache to look at other web directories as different domains so you can run multiple um web pages um or you know um on the same server so to do that we'll have to have a uh, we'll have to have a folder that we're going to use to keep our stuff in so i'm simply going to create a folder on the desktop. Now I could come over here and say hey new folder and we'll call this Joom Dev, right? Hit enter and that would be the end of that. Um, but in case I, there's some of you out there working just in a uh, console because you've installed server or something like that, I want to delete this folder and I'm just going to make it through um, the terminal. So that command is make dir, make directory Okay, and uh, what's the directory I want to make? Well, I'm going to go tilde, which is a shortcut for, in this case, home Joe H, my home folder, slash desktop, because I want it on my desktop, and I'm going to call it Joomla Dev. So I know that this folder is my Joomla development uh, website, or you know where I'm storing it. So I'm going to hit enter, and we see that it's popped up here on the desktop. So that part was uh, pretty simple. But now that we've done that, um, we want to be able to write um, uh, files and folders in here and uh, allow Apache to make modifications to this folder. But we still have some kind of permission issues. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to change um, Apache so that it runs as our user. Okay, and uh, again, this is not a recommended procedure for a production environment. My development server does not sit on the internet serving pages to anyone, so um, I don't have to worry about uh, being hacked or anything like that. Um, now, for uh, those of you uh, who are not overly familiar with uh, users and groups, uh, Linux um, um, uses uh, uh, the concept of a user and a group and other or world and when we look at files if we do an ls minus l here we see over here that uh, we have these groups of permissions so we know that uh, desktop here is a directory that the owner which is joe h has read write and execute okay the group of joe h has read and execute and anybody else would have read and execute on that folder so the first thing we need to, to decide is, is what is our username? Uh, how do I know that it's Joe H? Well, a couple ways are um, it's if you have a standard prompt, your username is listed right there in front of that at, so I know that it's Joe H. But you can also use a command called who am I? And when you run that command, it will tell you what user you're running as. Okay, and then um, to figure out what your group is, now by default Ubuntu will put you in a group the same as your name. Now you may have other groups that you're at, uh, that you're a member of, but uh, by default Ubuntu will create a group uh, with the same as your name. If you're curious or if you're on a different platform, um, you can type a group, groups, and then the username and hit enter and it will say okay so user Joe H is a member of 
Joe H, admin, CD ROM, sudo, etc. Okay, so the important th thing to take away here is that I'm going to use my username Joe H and my group Joe H um, to make modifications to the Apache server. So the uh, Apache use, uses um, uh, a folder called invars or environment variables that we need to edit and uh, we have to do that as sudo. So we're going to sudo and I want to use an editor called nano. Okay, And the file I want to uh, edit here is an etsy apache2 and then envvars. Okay. And then what I want to look for, I scroll down here, is, is for the line uh, Apache Run User and Apache Group User. You can see those here. So I'm going to change this from www.data, which is the user that Apache, Apache normally runs as, and change that to me. So whenever Apache runs, it's running as my user. And then I'm going to do the same thing for group. I'm, the group that I want it to run on under is Joe H. And then I'm going to hit Control X and ask me if I want to save the changes. Yes, I do. And where do I want to save them? Well, to the file here that I open. So that was pretty simple. Um, for those changes to take effect, we have to restart Apache. So we'll issue a sudo service. The service that we want to deal with is Apache 2. And we want to restart it. And then we'll get a notification that, well, actually we didn't get a notification, just the prompt come back. So Apache's restarted. So now when um, we want to write to our folder, this joomdev folder that we created for development, uh, we can write to it. And since Apache is running a, as us, Apache can run to it. And we avoid a lot of permission issues. Again, let me stress, this is not... Um, the proper way to set up uh, Apache if you have a machine facing the outside world. Again, I'm only setting up a development environment and I'm assuming all the risk. So, so the next thing that we need to do is we have to set up uh, the actual virtual host for Apache. And by doing that, we have to create a file um, and place it in a specific location so that Apache can find it and uh, that file that we're going to create will be uh, so we're going to sudo nano so we have to do this as super user and the file will need to be located in etsy apache oops apache 2 sites available okay and then the file that i'm going to create i'm going to call it joom.dev.conf now this file can be called anything uh, that you want. Okay, um, It's probably a good idea to name it something that you can remember or that rings a bell. So when I see joom.dev.conf I know that this is the configuration file for the virtual site of joom.dev. So hit enter and then here we need to uh, give it some information. So um, we're creating a virtual host Okay, and we're saying that it's going to answer from any IP address on port 80. Okay, now this is a XML file, so we want to make sure that we close these tags. So I like to do that as I go along. So virtual host, close that tag. Okay, and then uh, we need to tell it uh, what is the server name. So our server name uh, will be joom.dev. Now you can create anything that you want, but uh, I just, like I said, I want to be able to type joom.dev in the browser and uh, open this folder up here and read the contents of that folder. So that's the point of the ser server name. Now we have a server alias. Okay, and the server alias will be www.joom.dev. Okay. And then we need to tell it where it will find its uh, documents uh, for this. So we'll use document root. And it will be located in home. 
and then my username, Joe H. You have to put your username there on your system. And then it's going to be desktop and oops, Joom Dev. Okay. One thing I want to mention: this uh, uh, file is case sensitive. Um, so if you have any errors, that's where you'll want to look, and we probably will find some ourselves. So the next thing we need is the directory. Um, directive here and we're saying that it's in home Joe H you'll use your username there desktop Jim dev okay and while we're at it since I've opened that directory tag I want to close that directory tab okay so now inside of this we're going to specify some additional information uh, options uh, in indexes and follow some links okay we want allow override all and require all granted. Okay, so that takes care of the directory requirements. And so now we're going to tell it that its log level will be uh, information, info. Okay, and we say the error log will be located. We're going to use a environment variable here called Apache log dir, Apache underscore log underscore dir. Okay. Oops. And from there, we're going to store the uh, any errors into Joom dot dev dash error dot log. So if we have any errors, that's uh, where they're going to be located. Okay. And then our custom log will be located in the Apache log directory, okay, uh, in a file called joom.dev-access.log, and this is a combined log. If um, uh, the point of this uh, tutorial isn't to teach you how uh, Apache works. Uh, I'm just giving enough information to um, set up, you know, what we need to do that. So at this point, we need to uh, save this file. So we Control X and then Yes, and then Joom.dev.conf is the one that is where I want to save the file to. So now that we have the um, virtual host file created we have to do a couple of things um, to make this work. First of all, Apache has to be able to rewrite URLs. So in other words, when it sees a request for just localhost, it needs to know that it, it just goes to the, the default web directory. But when it sees a request for joom.dev, it needs to know that it needs to go to the joom.dev virtual host. So in order to do that, we have to uh, enable uh, a module called rewrite. So we'll sudo. A2, so uh, that means Apache 2 enable module, and then the module we want to uh, enable is a rewrite. And it tells us that it's enabling it, but in order to uh, uh, activate that configuration, that we have to restart Apache. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is um, enable our virtual site. So we're going to sudo, so it's A2 for Apache 2, right? enable and then we want to enable a site and the site that we want to enable is joom.dev.conf that's that file that we just created and again it tells us for the configuration uh, to take effect that we have to uh, uh, restart uh, Apache so let's do that so sudo service uh, Apache 2 oops uh, restart now if everything went well we shouldn't get any errors 
Okay, so it looked like Apache is restarted for us. So the next thing that we need to do is uh, if if we had DNS mapping for our domain, uh, we would use D DNS. But because we're keeping everything local on this machine, we have to figure out a way to let the machine know what address joom.dev is. So in order to do that, we're going to edit um, the host file. So we're going to sudo nano, and then the host file is located in Etsy hosts. Okay, and when we open this up, we're just going to add the line. Um, what's the IP address of joom.dev? Well, it's going to be the local host, right? It's the same machine, so we're going to put 127.0.0.1. Okay, and then we're going to uh, give it the um, the canonical name that we want to use. Uh, it's just www.joom.dev and then we're going to enter in the short name, or just joom.dev. Okay, and then we're going to save this file. Exit, yes. I want to save the buffer and that's where I want to save. So now if I do an ns lookup to joom.dev well, might help if I uh, use the proper command here, ns look up joom.dev you see that it returns a local address, it's 127.0.0.1 but okay so now that we've done that um, we have got, uh, we've set up uh, we've installed LAMP, we've set up MySQL, we've installed PHP My Admin we've told Apache that it's going to run as us and we've set up a virtual host to point to uh, a folder that's on our desktop that's easy and convenient for us to edit files in and uh, we have set up uh, name services through the host file so that when we put in joom.dev it knows where to find it so now um, Sorry about that. So now uh, the next thing we need to do is um, uh, create a, a simple page. So I'm just going to double click this folder and uh, I'm going to say uh, I want a new empty document here and we're going to call this index.html because that's what Apache looks for. And then we're going to edit this file. I'm just going to open it with gedit. And we're going to create a very, very simple web page here. So HTML. HTML and yeah, let's close the tag I always try to remember to close them because I'm bad about not doing so and then there's the head of the document and in the head we have a title and the title we're going to use is um, I don't know my Joomla development server and that's the end of the title. Okay, and then of course we're going to have a body. And in the body, we're going to just put in a, maybe an H2. Uh, we'll call this uh, virtual host test page the H2. Yeah, you can put anything you want here. I'm just, you know, and so uh, put a paragraph here. Um, welcome to your virtual host. Okay. So now we have a very simple web page. We're going to save that and we'll close that. So the next thing we need to do is uh, test and see if uh, our stuff worked. So Let's uh, open up our web browser and we're going to go to joom.dev. And there we have it. So it shows our virtual uh, host test page. And so we know that when we go to joom.dev, we're going to that folder that we've created on our desktop. Okay. So now we're, we've basically got everything that we need that we can start um, developing. Um, but there's some things that we can do to make it just a little bit better. Okay, one of the things that we'll want to do is uh, as we're coding in PHP, we want to be able to see any errors that we create. 
okay and uh, so we want to display the errors and in order to do that we need to make some modifications to the PHP INI file so we're going to edit the PHP INI file with sudo nano and it's located in uh, Etsy PHP 7.0 Apache 2 oops, Apache 2 and then php.ini so this file controls how PHP um, is, is set up and run so what we want to do is we want to look for error reporting and display errors now we could scroll through this file but this is a large file so we're going to take a shortcut nano allows us to search uh, for files by using control W or what they call where is we hit control W and then I'm going to put in error underscore reporting I'm sorry yeah yeah error reporting space equals and we hit enter so here we see error reporting equals is right now e all except don't show us anything deprecated and don't show us strict well we want the maximum number of errors that we can get so we're just going to change this from this to just e all so if there's a warning a notice a fatal error anything no matter what we want it uh, displayed and shown to us now in a, in a production environment you wouldn't turn these on because obviously you wouldn't want your end users to know that uh, well like me maybe you're a crappy programmer because I'm not a great programmer alright so the next thing we need to do is we're going to hit control W and we're looking for display error so d display underscore errors equals and hit enter so right now you see by default they're turned off we're going to change this from off to one okay so that's the only two changes that we need to make to PHP in order to uh, get them to show them for us so we're gonna hit um, control X yes we want to save and we want to save to PHP INI now in order for that to take effect of course we need to restart Apache so we're gonna sudo service the service we want to restart is Apache 2 and restart it so now if we uh, make an error in our PHP code um, Apache will show those errors too so that we know what to go back and fix so that's uh, well on our way to uh, seeing uh, problems but uh, there's more um, there's an extension called uh, xdebug so that when we do make an error xdebug can show us um, the flow of the program uh, and where the error occurred so it makes it a little bit uh, easier <coughs> for us to uh, to uh, trace those errors and uh, that's very easy to install we're just going to do a sudo apt install and what we want to install is php x debug and of course uh, it may or may not ask you to install software usually if it's just one package it doesn't ask you it just does it so here we are and then finally to um, <clears throat> make sure that uh, uh, Apache is using that we're going to restart the service again so sudo service Apache to restart okay so now that's uh, restarted so let's uh, let's go and just take a look and let's create uh, let's uh, rename this from index.html to index.php okay and let's edit this file and instead of uh, just putting in some HTML here let's uh, let's embed some uh, PHP so I'm going to come down here and insert a new line so PHP and then let's do a PHP info and close our PHP tag and save that so now let's go up here and hit F5 and refresh so now we get you know, our virtual host test page welcome and then we get all the uh, information about PHP so we have confirmed that PHP is running and if we make a mistake let's go back over here to our file and I'm just gonna leave off this closing um, 
uh, parentheses here and save that. I'm going to come back to our web page. I'm going to hit F5 to refresh. Ah, wait a minute. Parse error, syntax error, unexpected. So we're we're getting the errors, and then this brightly colored uh, line uh, gives us a trace of where where we've uh, hit the error at. This is a X debug or PHP X debug that does this for us. So we have a parse error, we have a syntax error, we have an unexpected semicolon. Uh, on line 10. So if we come over here, and we, so we see down here, we're on line 10. Oh, okay, I see it. There's a semicolon there, but we didn't finish this out. So hit that, save, refresh, and then you see our error's gone. So you can see how uh, that'll help us. But now there's one little problem. If we go to our joom.dev and go to PHP my admin, right remember that's the software that we use to access the database and hit enter ooh now that is ugly well let's take a look and see what's really going on here well what we see is that uh, PHP my admin the software is using some deprecated methods some, it's making function calls that uh, PHP is saying hey we're may not um, support these in the future so I'm, I'm giving this error well, we're getting these errors because we turned on all the error function. You know, this does not affect the way that um, PHP my admin runs. So, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and say, "Hey, ignore all of these errors," and then we get the login like normal. So, let's go ahead and log in. Remember, that's root, and then the password that you gave it, and then we're logged in so it's ignoring errors but we should still get uh, errors on our own so let's double let's double check so let's uh, let's uh, remove that uh, parentheses again and save it and let's uh, open a new tab and let's go to joom.dev oh, so we're still getting the error on our our work which is what we want we don't want to see the errors on uh, PHP my admin because we're only using this as a tool to work with the database. Now, here's something else that uh, I need to point out. You notice that we weren't getting this error. The configuration file needs a secret pass phase blowfish secret. We're not going to worry about that um, because we changed the ownership of Apache and we didn't make the uh, appropriate changes for PHP my admin. It's ha uh, there's files that it can't read to get this and that's why we're getting that, but it will not affect what we need to do. So there we have it. We have uh, Apache installed with MySQL and PHP, PHP MyAdmin, we have PHP Debug installed. So now we have an environment where we can uh, add some more tools um, uh, and then uh, get uh, Joomla, a base package of Joomla installed, um, NetBeans, and uh, some other stuff and we'll move from there. So I hope, uh, I know this has been a bit of a long video, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, there's more to come. I do want to say that uh, you can go to um, myheap.com. That's my personal website. And on myheap.com, under technology, you'll see that right now it says Exploring Joomla 2.5. This stuff will go away, and I will replace this with Joomla 3.x. And when you go there, you'll find um, uh, the same series of uh, videos on in this case, um, you know how to install LAMP on Ubuntu 16.4. You'll be able to download a PDF of this web page plus the video that I've just created for this after I've edited it and posted it. So uh, hang with me; it's going to take some time uh, to get these in place. Uh, hopefully, this will uh, um, help people um, in the long run on how to write extensions for Joomla. So thank you again for watching. Uh, have a great day. Uh, if you have questions, you can come to my website and hit contact us and send me an email, or you can post uh, in the comments under the YouTube video. So uh, thank you again for watching, uh, and have a blessed day.